Welcome to a brief overview of the 1933 earthquake, an event that rocked the Long Beach area and surrounding communities. This presentation is based on Earthquake 33, a publication of the Historical Society of Long Beach. This devastating event demonstrated the potential of a significant earthquake striking a modern urban area, but it also generated the first attempts to mitigate the damage to people and property caused by such an event. It also united the community that had tripled in size in less than 20 years. This California geological survey map clearly shows the earthquake potential for the state and region. The San Andreas Fault is merely one of hundreds of active faults that exist in California. There is constant movement, although usually undetectable to human eyes, along the fault lines in this region. The earthquake in 1933 that damaged Long Beach resulted from movement along the Newport Englewood Fault. This California geological survey map demonstrates the intensity of ground shaking experienced in local areas as a result of the March 10, 1933 earthquake. The intensity differed along a scale of 1 to 12, with 12 resulting in an assessment of, quote, total damage, waves seen off the ground, objects thrown into air. The smaller map shows that the Long Beach area suffered damage in the 6 to 9 scale, with 6 indicating earthquake felt by all, some damage to plaster, seven indicating people run outdoors, damage to poorly built structures, eight indicating well-built structures slightly damaged, poorly built structures suffer major damage, and nine indicating buildings shifting off foundations. The larger map also indicates that the area experienced a 5.4 earthquake as measured on the recently developed Richter scale about seven months later on October 2nd 1933. This drawing indicates the general area affected by the March 10th earthquake. Originating several miles offshore from Seal Beach, the quake rumbled through Long Beach, Compton, southeastern Los Angeles, Linwood, Bellflower, Artesia, and sections of Norwalk and Southgate. Striking a few minutes before 6 p.m., the Tembler lasted about 10 seconds and is usually described as a 6.3 earthquake. In just a few seconds, hundreds of brick and mortar buildings collapsed or were severely damaged, killing more than 120 persons. Several dozen additional fatalities were recorded in other cities. The damage estimates varied from $40 million to $50 million, which is about $500 million in 2018 dollars. More than 31,000 buildings in the area suffered varying degrees of damage. The falling debris from damaged buildings accounted for many of the injuries as people ran outdoors and were struck by falling debris. Many of the towns in this earthquake zone are built on an alluvial plain. Thus, the soft soil, gravel, and other material facilitated severe earth movement, causing damage to many of the unreinforced brick buildings. Long Beach Polytechnic High School suffered major damage to its front entrance area. It is one of 50 public schools in the city to suffer significant damage as stucco facades and brick walls were shaken down. If the earthquake had struck a few hours earlier, thousands of children would have been in their classrooms, and the casualty toll may have been much higher. The city's population grew dramatically from 1920 to 1933, tripling to about 170,000. The demand for new schools meant that more than 25 were built between 1918 and 1933. In the aftermath of the damage caused by the quake, some suspected that school construction needed to be reviewed. One of the first results of such evaluations was that the office of the California State Architect was given approval authority on all new school construction. The state legislature enacted the Field Act in April 1933 that mandated construction standards for all new buildings in California. Despite earlier damaging earthquakes in California, such as San Francisco in 1906 and Santa Barbara in 1925, building codes and other regulations did not reflect the dimension of the problem. Looking back over the last two centuries, there are many examples of severe quakes along the region's major fault lines. The difference is that in 1857, when a major earthquake struck along the San Andreas Fault, California's population was quite small and there were no large cities. Since 1933, a major earthquake has struck the state every 10 years. This photo shows a small downtown shopping area with Arnold's Garage on Ocean Boulevard. 
and it shows severe damage due to ground shaking. This building was a total loss, and the piles of bricks in the street indicate why it did not survive the quake. The Signal Hill area also suffered severe damage to buildings and oil rigs. One of the immediate fears focused on fires igniting the oil production areas of the hill. Here sailors from naval vessels, home port in San Pedro Bay, patrol the affected neighborhoods. By 1933, oil production in and around Signal Hill made it one of the most important industrial areas in the region. Within minutes of the earthquake, naval vessels anchored within sight of downtown Long Beach sent hundreds of sailors and marines to aid in rescuing victims, clearing rubble, and fighting fires. In the following days, they also patrolled city streets to prevent looting. Navy ships also sent doctors and other medical personnel to aid in recovery to set up field hospitals and stayed on the job until help arrived from state and county authorities. City officials, including the police department, sent expressions of gratitude to the Navy in the weeks following. Relations between military personnel and the city, which had never been very good since the Navy arrived in the Long Beach area after World War I, improved remarkably after the earthquake. By 1935, Long Beach was proudly declaring itself the Navy capital of the United States. Many citizens lost their homes and apartments due to quake damage. With gas and electricity temporarily turned off to prevent fires, many were left without food. The city and other service organizations set up field kitchens in local parks to feed the hungry. Here people wait in long lines for hot food at Lincoln Park next to the library. Here is another example of devastation caused by the quake. Trinity Lutheran Church on 8th Street and Atlantic Avenue is one of dozens of church buildings severely damaged in Long Beach. Once again, unreinforced masonry construction collapsed due to severe ground shaking. This is an alleyway behind radio station KFOX, and it shows the destruction caused by falling debris. Each one of those bricks became a flying missile capable of causing great damage to people and property. In the days immediately following the event, Long Beach officials became determined to downplay the effects of the earthquake. By the early 1930s, the city had blossomed into a major tourist attraction on the West Coast. Visitors from Midwestern states such as Iowa and Nebraska burnished its reputation as a seaside resort. A well-known amusement zone, the Pike, featured thrill rides, restaurants, dancing, and beach accommodations. There were beauty pageants, sea festivals, and sport fishing as well. The Pacific Electric Trolley Cars brought local day tourists from all over Southern California. The city was attracting national conventions with its recently opened municipal auditorium. The Los Angeles Times, always careful to protect and enhance the reputation of its city, had labeled the events of March 10th as the Long Beach earthquake, although damage was widespread throughout the southeastern section of Los Angeles County. To reassure possible convention visitors and other commercial interests that Long Beach was open for business, the local Chamber of Commerce hired a photographer to take photos of the downtown area of the city from the air. The notarized pictures were then circulated nationwide to press outlets and travel agencies to reassure the public. As we think about the 1933 earthquake, it is clear that earthquakes are not only a part of Long Beach's history, but of its future as well. The geologic situation has not altered since 1933, and we can expect earthquakes of varying intensity in our future. Although building construction and emergency services have greatly improved over the last decades, preparation in terms of supplies and planning can make a huge difference when the next severe earthquake strikes our area.